Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the latest album from Eric Taxon, Two-Tone. Eric Taxon, an obscure Bandcamp artist who isn't actually that obscure anymore. He certainly was much more so the last two times I covered him on this channel, but by this point he... He now has a much bigger audience than I do, thanks to some of his political videos blowing up and his soundtracking and H-Bomber guy videos, so I don't know if calling him obscure is as appropriate now. I imagine a lot of people watching my stuff are already familiar with him anyways, certainly more well-known than Magic Sound Fabric now, but he's not exactly a well-known superstar or anything either, so I think it still applies to some degree. But yeah, if you have missed my other two videos on this guy, I'll link those in the description. Uh, I'll to say he's one of the most interesting artists I've ever covered on this channel. The guy is super prolific, though the, the release I'm covering now is his 29th on Bandcamp to date. He has a discography that most people are not going to have the time to browse through everything at this point, unless you're someone like me who has a lot of time on his hands. But as someone who has sat through all of his releases so far, I can tell you there is a crap ton of variety. Every album is different, and he goes through so many different styles and genres, from synth-pop to minimal house to plunderphonics to chiptune to anti-chiptune to IDM to ambient to hip-hop to punk to experimental noise to vaporwave, whatever, you name it. But all of it still very much has a certain flair and style to it that is easily recognizable as his own. Out of the way, he puts together melodies and has certain palette of synth settings he likes to use. I can tell that something was made by him at a distance. I definitely don't like everything he's ever done, and I'll admit the majority of his projects don't offer a ton in the way of replay value for me personally, but he is the kind of artist that basically anyone can go into his projects and find at least a handful that will stick with them, and which ones will stick will be different for everyone. The ones that stuck the most with me so far, obviously, have been uh, the two I did proper videos on, Winter Beats and Gallery. Gallery not as much as Winter Beats, but still. I also keep around Summer Drones, uh, I keep on the first two-thirds of My Lady, and also Buy My Knob. Uh, not, a not enough love for that one, probably his most underrated project for me. And uh, anyways, here's my thoughts on uh, the albums in his discography so far that I... Uh, have not already covered in the previous two videos. So everything after gallery. Oh boy. <laughs> of course I have to start with the one that physically cannot be talked about in brief. I will admit, first of all, Mark from Spectrum Pulse covered this better than I'll ever be able to, and personal enjoyment-wise, I think he got a lot more out of it than I did. But interestingly enough, it's more because of the regular mashups that take up the bulk of it that, w that I wasn't huge on. Most are fun for one listen, but otherwise didn't resonate with me or give me a reason to want to go back to them. It didn't make me enjoy the use of any of the original tracks I didn't like before, see Malibu and Hey Soul Sister. And his use of Too Much of Heaven by Eiffel 65, which I did already like before, just kind of made me want to listen to the original. Really only three trucks... trucks. <sighs> really only three tracks stuck out to me as really enjoyable. Uh, I liked Lost Lander thanks to that sample of Wonderful World by Lost Lander, which sounds great next to that breakbeat. And the Megan Trainer ambient piece on the back half of Sing and Sing was pretty great too. But most importantly, I was very surprised to find that my favorite track was, in fact, I'm Not Famous. Sure, I got a little sick to my stomach think of it, thinking of how it would have worked in its original context, and AJR singers suck, and also outright plagiarism is not a trick that I think can be pulled off twice or by any other artist that I know of. On an ideological level, I think I agree more with the stuff Mark said about it, but okay, you got me. It worked this one time, and it fits really well in the context of this album. Don't think I'm going to listen to this ever again, but it is definitely worth at least one listen for the food for thought, if nothing else. Alright, now on to the album that got him big thanks to its use as a soundtrack to an H-Bomber guy video. And it's pretty nice. The combination of chiptune elements with the antiquated sounding samples make for a pretty fun and atmospheric listen that fits into his usual style quite well. Cool stuff. Uh, Hareton's Dream and the first half of Cowardice in particular stuck out to me as big highlights. This album basically shows him making a fake video game soundtrack and emulating the elements he most enjoys in old video game music, namely not using 8-bit chiptune elements, the above mentioned anti-chiptune album. And I think it's markedly better than the previous one for me. 
Okay, so this is apparently his take on Synthwave. Honestly, it sounds kind of like his previous album, but more reverb-heavy and expansive and less lo-fi. Maybe with some occasional whiffs of Rift's era, One Tricks Point Never, or early Jean-Michel Jarre if you were more stripped back and used major keys more often. Nostalgia was probably a little better, but I also thought this was pretty good too. And the closer Beast was definitely the best track for me. Also, this probably has his best album artwork. Another ambient release, though, this one's different from his previous ones like Cicada or Summer Drones. Has more sample manipulation and layering, going for this kind of broken radio transmission kind of vibe, obviously given the title. Given getting some Boards of Canada Tomorrow's Harvest vibes in some areas. I actually enjoyed this one a lot. Uh, may even hang on to this in the long term. Thumbs up on this. And this EP is his take on Nightcore. Uh, not my thing, honestly. Th this much pitched up sampling was a bit much for me and kind of gave me a headache. But there's some cool ideas on here and I really like the last track. Which brings us to here. So, uh, this particular release, aside from being billed as a sequel to his first album from this year, One Pop, caught my eye as something worth covering since it was also presented as his take on straight EDM. Progressive House and Big Room were two labels being applied to it. I know I've made fun of the entire Big Room genre quite frequently, but I was genuinely curious on what his take on that would actually be like. And after I actually did listen to it, I felt like I had enough to say on it for a proper video, and here we are. So let's talk about it. So, uh, first of all, uh, I should address how this album is apparently a sequel to One Pop. Honestly, if you hadn't told me or the artwork and title didn't already give off that impression, I might not have been able to guess. It doesn't feel like it fits in the same universe as that album. Everything is so much brighter, flashier, more energetic, everything feels a lot bigger than maybe any other Eric Texan album I've heard so far. One Pop was so much more low-key and smaller, maybe it does take from a similar palette of futuristic tones, but the vibe I get out of Two Tone is very different. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though. To get to the point, I thought this album is very good. He was going for this kind of slightly more commercial-sounding EDM sound, and I think he really pulled it off, while still making it sound like him. From a mastering perspective, I've got- I've basically got no complaints whatsoever. All these synth textures sound great. And of course, as a full album, it's very well constructed, consistent enough sonically to fit together, but varied enough not to be boring well-paced, etc. Though, to be fair, album construction has never been a problem with Eric Tax, and I'd be much more surprised if I had any major problems in that department. I will say that my personal enjoyment of this album is not the most consistent, though. There are some tracks that I thought were great, so there are some that I really like specific parts of, some that I thought were fine, and there was one track that I, I didn't really care for much at all. I don't think this album quite reaches greatness for me as a whole, but I like it a lot, and will still give it my recommendation in the end. So, the majority of these tracks tend to have most of the sound and detail packed into the treble area, and there are some uh, that didn't have- didn't really have much bass at all, and just focused on the sparkly, high-pitched lead synths. I'll be honest, the low end is usually what dictates how much I'll get into any given track. Once some bass comes in to fill the full frequency spectrum, there will be a stronger groove I can get myself invested in, while at the same time appreciating the other details layered on top. Otherwise, I'll feel like we're building up to something but waiting on a payoff. I may as well get out of the way the one track on here that I didn't like at all. That's Domino. To be fair, the main problem I have with that track is that it's being carried by a text-to-speech voice singing that I really cannot stand the sound of. That voice got really grating really fast. But it doesn't help that there's no bass line on this track either, not at any point. So it never develops any sort of groove for me and I'm just left wondering what I was supposed to get out of it. I mean, the groove was kind of what I liked about the original track by Jesse J that this is covering. This just really rubbed me the wrong way and I more often than not feel the urge to skip it entirely. That's the only track I didn't like though. I may have found the intro of Shine to be pretty forgettable, and a Drive took a while to really get going for me, but even that one is still a pretty likable, more low-key, maybe more emotional moment for this album that I don't ever feel like skipping. Those are probably the lowest points on this album. The rest I don't take any major issues with. I mean, you know how I mentioned that there was apparently Big Room House on this album? Well, uh, I think it's really just one track on here that goes for that particular mold in an obvious way. That being Crush, 
Now, if I wanted to be really pedantic, I would say I don't think Crush quite accomplishes being a true big room house track, because, quite frankly, it doesn't sound stupid enough. I mean, there's an obvious more melodic buildup and a drop that has a fraction of the momentum that the buildup had, but that drop still sounds pretty good, all things considered. Coming closer to, like, the original dubstep sound, like the pre- like the old school pre-Skrillex kind. Of course, it doesn't have so much bass that it makes me want to tear my headphones out like a lot of that old school dubstep I heard did. And this also has some trap percussion on top as well. I presume to throw more people off and think, eh, the mainstream stuff, eh, or something like that. But uh, I still think it sounds really good, and it has this really cool dark atmosphere to it. Feels less like coming to a dead stop and pointlessly dicking around like most Big Room House I've heard, and more like hitting the reset button and starting up a different buildup entirely. Like, the buildup and drop have opposite purposes that they usually do. So yeah, that track is great. The only other thing that might possibly come off as Big Room is maybe Hunger, but I didn't even notice that it even could be until like my fourth listen of this. <laughs> There's a drop where it's just the kick and the lead synth playing a bunch of individual notes, but the transition into the drop was so smooth and the particular synth tones he used were still so bright and cheerful it didn't feel like it dropped the momentum. And while I'm on the topic of this track, this one also features the pitched up guest vocals of one Danny Wade. And uh, surprisingly enough, I thought this sounded really natural too. It sounds less like a galantis type chipmunk voice and more like it was being used to make him sound like a girl or something. So yes, that was another big highlight for me. As for the other tracks on here, there's obviously three on here where Taxon sings himself, as per usual. Those tracks are Diamond Sky, Cold Princess, and Last Stop. Of those three, my favorite is definitely Diamond Sky. Uh, now, his voice is kind of made mostly incomprehensible by the presence of lots of stutter edits. If the lyrics weren't posted on his Bandcamp page, I wouldn't have understood like 80% of what he said. But the melody and overall sound of the track well makes up for it. And the stutter edits just, you know, kind of remind me of BT anyways, so that track is great. Probably the one that's most lingered in my head too, the catchiest. When the sky is blue. Look at these dun, 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 dun. Cold Princess takes a while to really get going for me. There's kind of two halves to it, with the first half being kind of trouble heavy, with the only bass being provided by his voice, and that part is cool and all. But the second half, where some more 8 bit synths and percussion come in to flesh out the mix, does the track really start to captivate me? And finally, Last Stop is kind of a bouncy, straight progressive house number that, from the lyrics, I think is meant to be a follow-up to the track Guns from One Pop. It's probably the one track from here that might have had the easiest time fitting on that album, too, since there's not much that goes into it and it's not quite as bright and shiny as other tracks on here. It's more like an early Dead Mouse cut or something. That leaves two more instrumentals that I haven't already mentioned yet, and both of those were big highlights for me. The Mountain was a really nice cut. It started out like it was going to be really hard hitting and almost Eric Prids-ish, but ended up kind of more chill in the drop section, but still all flowing together really naturally, and I, I like the melodies and progressions it provides. Another one of my favorites. Maybe this is another one that was almost big room if you look at it a certain way, but like Hunger, it sounded too good and flowed too well for me to actually notice it could be for several lessons. And the ending, C, is not the forgettable ambience that the intro was, but instead a set of really huge sounding, slightly broken up synth chords, taking us out on a really climactic note. So yeah, that's, that's everything, that's my thoughts on Two Tone. Another really solid project from Eric Taxon. He's had more consistent albums than this one. For instance, even though I think the production and mastering here is better than something like Winter Beats, the compositions and ideas on there were a lot more fun for me. But I am impressed by the production on this one regardless. Even Domino, despite personally really rub rubbing me the wrong way, wasn't unsatisfying because of any shoddy mastering or anything like that. The track was still well produced. So yeah, if you're interested in hearing Eric Taxon try on some more modern-sounding EDM production, I think he did a really good job on it, all things considered. And he got to fit well into his usual style and sound, too. While maybe it didn't totally floor me, I think it's one of his better projects from this year. 
good stuff. Looking forward uh, to seeing what else he puts out this year or afterwards. And I'm overall feeling a 7.5 out of 10. But of course, it's just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. If you want to add yourself to that list or make me review something, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.